The Gods of Middle-earth Every mythology must have a beginning in order to explain the state of the world and how it came into being. The mythology of Tolkien is no different. The Silmarillion tells how in the beginning there was Eru, the One, who is also called Ilivitar. It was he who created all things and set all things into motion. The Ainur, or Holy Ones, were brought forth from the thoughts of Iruvatar. The Ainur know much of what was, and is, and is to come, and few things are unseen by them. The mightiest of them was Melkor. The only things they had no part in creating were the children of Iruvatar, the elves and the men. Before the birth of the world, Iluvatar showed the Ainur a vision of the children to come. Some of the Ainur so loved the children that they desired to go into the world beforehand to prepare it for future inhabitants. As now semi-divine ones, they were named the Valor, the powers of the world. They dwelt in the undying lands in their great city of Valamar, within sight of Middle-earth and within call of Iluvatar. Manwe was dearest to Iluvatar and most understands his purposes. He is lord and king of all the Valar and rules in peace. Of all the elves, he loved the Vanyar the most. He delights in the wind and the clouds. All swift birds, strong of wing, he loves. Poetry also is his delight. Music was his gift to the elves. His raiment, his scepter, and the fire of his eyes were of sapphire blue. His brother was Melkor, and his wife, Varda. Varda, the Lady of the Stars, is given credit as the lead sponsor and teacher to the elves. They hold her most in reverence and love. Her beauty was too great to be declared, as the light of Iluvatar still lived in her face. She and her husband did not dwell in Valamar, but in Middle-earth, upon the highest mountain called Oyolasi, also known as Teniquetio. She was the most feared and hated of the Valor by Melkor. Ulmo was Lord of Waters, the King of the Sea. His voice was as deep as the ocean depths which only he had seen. Ulmo dwelled alone and nowhere long. All seas, lakes, rivers, fountains and springs under his governance. Of all the elves, the Teleri learned the most from him. It is mainly because of Ulmo that all the earth did not die under the dark days of Melkor. Aule was lord of all substances of which the world was made. The fashioning of all lands were his labor. As the smith of the valor, he delighted in all works of skill. Of all the elves, he was partial to the Noldor, for they learned much from him and were the most skilled of the elves. It was the Noldor who crafted the Silmarils. Aule played a special part in the awakening of the dwarves, and his wife was Yavanna. Yavanna is the giver of fruits. She is a lover of all things that grow in the earth. It was she who gave life to the two trees of Valinor, Telperion and Laurelin. Of all the things Yavanna made, they are the most renowned. The white tree of Gondor, the chief symbol of the royalty of Gondor, was a direct descendant of Telperion. In the form of a woman, she is tall and robed in green, and her sister is Vanna. The Feanturi were masters of spirits and were brothers. Their names were Namo, also known as Mandos, and Irmo, also known as Lorian. Namo was the keeper of the houses of the dead and the summoner of spirits slain. He is the doomsman of the Valor. Irmo is the master of visions and dreams. His gardens are the fairest places in the world, filled with many spirits. Vyre, the weaver, is the spouse of Namo. She weaves all things that have ever been in time into her storied webs. The halls of Mandos, the home of her husband, are clothed with her tales. Este the gentle is the wife of Irmo. She is the healer of hurts and weariness. Gray is her raiment and the rest is her gift. From her fountains, even the valor find refreshment. Niena is the sister of the Feanturi and dwells alone. She is acquainted with grief and mourns for every wound that the earth has suffered at the hand of Melkor. Those who hearken to her learn pity and endurance and hope. She brings strength to the spirit and turns sorrow to wisdom. 
Tulkas the Valiant is greatest in strength and deeds of prowess. He came last to Earth to aid in the wars against Melkor. He delights in wrestling and contests of strength. He can also outrun all things that go on foot, and he is tireless. His only weapons are his hands. He is ruddy in complexion, with hair and beard of gold. His wife is Nessa. Nessa, the wife of Tulkas, is also lithe and fleet-footed. Deer are what she loves, and they follow her whenever she goes into the wild. But swift as an arrow with the wind in her hair, she can easily outrun them. She delights in dancing, and dances in Valamar on lawns of never-fading green. Her brother is Orome. Orome, the great hunter and the warrior of the Valor, who played the major role in the overthrow of Melkar at the end of the First Age. He loves the land of Middle-earth and, when the time came, left unwillingly and often returned to the world. He was the hunter of the monsters and fell beasts of Melkor and delighted in horses and hounds. All trees he loved. He is also credited with being the major sponsor and helper to the emerging race of men. Vanna the Everyung is the wife of Arome and the younger sister of Yavanna. All flowers spring as she passes, and open if she glances at them, and all birds sing at her coming. And of all the Ainur, Melkor had been given the greatest gifts of power and knowledge, and had a share in all the gifts of his brethren. Discord arose around him from the beginning. His desire was to subdue to his will both elves and men, envying their gifts, desiring to have subjects and servants, to be called Lord and to be master over all other wills. After the descent into the world, Melkor would undo or corrupt all the labors of the Valor. He is no longer counted among the Valor and is known as Morgoth, the dark enemy by the Noldor. In darkness he used his most evil works upon the world and filled it with fear for all living things. Most dreadful of all his evil works were the Balrogs the scourges of fire known in Middle-earth as demons of terror. When the Valor descended into the world, other spirits also came with them. They are the same order as the Valor, but are of a lesser degree and are known as the Maiar. Their number is not known to the elves, and few names have been known to elves or men. But there are some who are remembered from the Elder Days. Lady Melian was granted special permission to forsake her grand nature as Maiar, to both Varda and Este, to become a lesser one and marry the elvish king Thingol Greycloak of the Sindar. Their daughter was Lady Luthien Tenuviel, who also forsook her nature to marry a chieftain of men, Baron. Sauron the Great, the lieutenant of Melkor, was a mayor of the Aule. Of all the works of Morgoth, Sauron had a part. He was only less evil in the fact that for many years he served another and not himself. But in after years, he rose like a shadow of Morgoth and as a ghost of his malice, and walked behind him in the same ruinous path into the void. It was Morgoth who released evil into the world. He stole the Silmarils, the mightiest works of craft ever made, and poisoned the two trees, Telperion and Laurelin, which represented the guardianship of the Valor over Middle-earth. These acts forever upset the balance and forced the Valor to take a far more active role in the affairs of Middle-earth than originally intended. When Morgoth fled, the Valor did not pursue him into the mortal lands of Middle-earth. The Noldor, or High Elves, residing in the Undying Lands, were the ones who pursued the evil Valor, for it was one of their kind who forged the three Silmarils in the first place. The elves who followed Morgoth were exiled from returning to the Undying Lands as punishment for taking the war of the Great Jewels to Middle-earth. Yet it was men who valiantly fought against the evil with no thought of gain. The Valor rewarded men with a western land of their own, the land of Numenor. However, the gift backfired. After the destruction of Numenor, the Valor determined to no longer take a direct part in the affairs of mortals. Instead, when help was needed, they sent messengers to Middle-earth to work against evil. These ones were known as wizards. By encouraging the free peoples to assist in their own destiny, the mortals became aware of the ancient balance and the need to maintain it. At the end of the Third Age, the Valor were able to withdraw completely from the affairs of Middle-earth when their guardianship was no longer needed.